This is Assignment 2, Band in a Box Intro, J. Bobbin. And yes, I know we're using Real Band software, but for now we're going to be addressing the same feature set in Real Band that we would in Band in a Box. So there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. We'll just continue using our information based on Band in a Box until we address other features of Real Band not found in the Band in a Box software. Please read all of the information located within the assignment as it gives you an overview of the features of the Band in a Box software, again, that we will find and use in Real Band. In fact, as I was reviewing this, about the only thing that I saw mentioned in our assignment that is not found in Real Band is the wizard feature, and that's found uh, right above the term icons about midway down page two. And the wizard feature was a feature in Band in a Box that permitted you to input MIDI information using the computer keyboard as opposed to having a piano keyboard connected via MIDI. It was more of a novelty than a real useful feature, uh, so its omission is, is not really uh, that important to us here in Real Band. Before we begin the actual assignment, which is the importing of a Band in a Box file, followed by the exporting of that file in a different format, we have to change one of our preferences in Real Band. So, if you would please go to the Preferences menu, which should be located at the top, and double click. We are interested in the tab labeled 7, Song Generation. And by default, I've already switched mine, you should see these two checkboxes selected, Allow Real Tracks and Allow Real Drums. Real Tracks and Real Drums will make reference to audio material, but that's beyond the scope of our assignment. We are interested specifically and only, uh, exclusively, in MIDI material. So, deselect these two choices and press OK. So now upon import, we will be limiting ourselves to the MIDI data. So how do we import? Well, we can do that by going to the File menu, if you wish, and select Open. We also have a keyboard shortcut of F3, which is displayed here. Or I can go to the icon. And you'll find this multiple location uh, for many different uh, windows and functions within the program. Now, I just have placed my assignment file on the desktop so I could find it easily. I will select that, the JBoppin assign to, and notice that immediately our chords window is populated with information from the song. And by the way, your first window may have been the tracks window. I'm not sure which is going to be displayed when uh, you first open up the program. So if you saw this instead of this, that's not a problem. And these windows, the changing of these windows can be done via keyboard shortcuts as I'm doing them or through the selection of the appropriate icon or even under the Windows menu. So many different routes to the same location. I am going to uh, direct your attention now to this Tracks window. BB, as you might guess, indicates Band in a Box. And this is simply saying that this information was generated from Band in a Box. There's a lot of information here. Feel free to click around. Notice how much information is uh, displayed in the additional text box. And notice what happens here. And by the way, we will actually learn all of the uh, information, the meaning of all of this information that is found uh, when scrolling over these icons. So there's a lot to learn. Uh, in this particular class to be sure. To play back we can certainly go to our transport controls up here and select. You can also stop and start with your spacebar as I just did. And this should be similar to the sound of your playback as well as similar to the look. You should have the same dots indicating the performance of instruments over the keyboard. Just as an aside, some other windows here that are sort of uh, interesting. 
we have, for instance, a drums window. And any drum that is being sounded is indicated by this uh, red concentric circles. There is a guitar part that's going to start something. There it is. It's actually showing multiple parts. We'll discuss the use of that later. That's again just kind of a novelty. So that gives you an idea of what the sound of the song should be like. Your task is to save it in a different format, so it would be save as, as opposed to save, and then you notice that by default it's giving us a, a real band file, which is an extension of SEQ, and we'll simply change that to MIDI. Save the file wherever you wish, uh, and then make sure that you send the .mid file that was generated uh, as the completed assignment. And now we'll conclude our discussion of Assignment 2.